Transport Canada just dropped Canada Gazette 2, and let me tell you, it's 1,100 pages of changes that are going to shake up the drone world. If you're flying a micro drone doing commercial work, there's a big change for you, so you're gonna wanna stick around. Now, this was just published at 6 a.m. Pacific time today on March 26, and we're reacting to the final version as quickly as everyone else across the drone industry. So this video may not be comprehensive to everything that's happening, but we will absolutely have follow-up content and specific videos that are gonna be in depth about each major change that's coming. So hit that subscribe button, and of course the notification bell so that you're alerted as soon as a new video drops. If you're a Canadian or an American wanting to fly drones here in Canada, this is important information, so we're gonna jump straight in. So let's dive right into the biggest update, the introduction of the Level 1 Complex Operations Certificate. This is big because it opens up the door to low-risk BVLOS, so that's Beyond Visual Line of Sight Operations, without needing a full-blown SFOC, or Special Flight Operations Certificate. To qualify as a pilot of a Level 1 Complex Beyond Line of Sight, Here's what you're gonna need. So first off, you're gonna to need to be at least 18 years old. You're gonna to have to complete 20 hours of ground school specific to level one complex operations. You'll also have to pass the advanced online exam and also an additional level one complex online exam. Once you've done that, then you'll have to do a level one complex flight review and if you're gonna be operating as a business or a solo operator in order to do the level one complex operations, you're gonna need an RPAS operator certificate or an RPOC. This means having proper policies, training schedules, and manuals in place to match the complexity of your operations. Now, where can you fly beyond line of sight? Well, at this point, it's gonna be only in uncontrolled airspace, under 122 meters or 400 feet above ground, away from airports and aerodromes, and for smaller medium drones, at least one kilometer from populated areas. Simple? Well, sort of, but it's a big step forward for those doing inspections, mapping, or search and rescue operations. Or delivery or even drone delivery, exactly. Now, if you already hold an advanced pilot certificate, we've got some great news. You're getting more privileges with no extra testing or certification. You're just getting an upgrade. Here's what's new for advanced pilots. You're gonna get sheltered operations, extended visual line of sight operations, and medium drones within visual line of sight. All right, let's break these down, starting with sheltered operations. Sheltered operations let you fly small drones close to buildings or other structures. To qualify, you must stay more than 30 meters away from bystanders, fly no higher than 30 meters above structures, 30 meters being 100 feet, and you must be no more than 60 meters horizontally away from the structure. This is great for roof inspections, real estate work, or construction monitoring where you won't need to get an SFOC for sheltered operations. The new requirements for extended visual line of sight, you're gonna to need to stay in uncontrolled airspace, keep 30 meters away from people not involved, so doesn't matter about your safety assurance declaration. You need to have a certified visual observer with you, they need to have at minimum a basic certificate. Again, we'll talk about that in a second. And you need to stay within two nautical miles or 3.6 kilometers of your control station. Yeah, so if you send a guy a mile away from you, that means three nautical miles from the original point of origin. Yes, and which is currently what we can do. It's, we're just, ex so the extended view loss is saying you're allowed to fly farther than you can see as long as you have someone helping you see the airspace around. And you're staying more than 30 meters away from people. So think of things like long line patrols, farmland surveys, pipeline patrols. This is gonna make jobs like that way more manageable. Or farmer's fields. Farmer's fields, very good. One of the things we were concerned about was the requirement for visual observers to be certified. In an earlier version of the Gazette, it said that they need to have an advanced certificate, but they've clarified in this one that the visual observer only needs to hold a basic certificate. It's a great way for people to grow into drone operations. So now let's talk about something we're seriously excited about medium drones that's going to be drones that are from 25 kilograms all the way up to 150 kilograms now for the first time you can fly a medium drone within visual line of sight without getting an SFOC. And this is only if the drone is declared safe and capable of your operation type. So it's going to be a pre-validated declaration or a PVD. You can fly in uncontrolled airspace and even in some controlled airspace as long as you have air traffic control permission from NAV Canada. This is gonna open up the door for heavy lift drones in mapping, delivery, and industrial operation. Okay, micro drone pilots, this one's for you. 
Starting April 1st, 2025, if you want to fly your micro drone at advertised events, you're going to need a special flight operations certificate. Now, this doesn't mean you're going to need a basic or an advanced certificate, but there is going to be a form that you're going to need to submit. We're guessing this is aimed at preventing rogue drone flights at concerts, festivals, parades, sports games, things like that. One of the things we should also mention is they're expanding the 900 section of the uh, regulations. Now, the 900 section is the one that applies to all drones. Right. Specifically, one of the ones we saw is that there's going to be a new rule that prevents people from flying within the established perimeter of a public service uh, during an emergency. So think ambulance, firefighter, police. If there's tape, if there's lines, if there's people posted up there trying to prevent people from coming in, you're you can't not cross be... it. This includes micro drone pilots, so make sure you're staying away from emergency areas. Yeah, and so this was already a law before, but what has now been put in is there's an exemption for police or any other drones that are involved in life-saving measures that are part of this action. And this actually brings it back in line with the cars for airplanes and helicopters. In most sections of the cars for airplanes and helicopters, there's always an exemption for uh, for operations during life-saving events. Around the office, opinions are varying on the, these micro drone requirements, but we all agree on a couple things. These micro drones, they're not toys. They're capable, powerful tools that deserve to be treated that way. And more importantly, micro drone pilots are pilots. Just like anybody else flying an R-Pass or an aircraft or a helicopter, they carry responsibilities. They carry responsibilities to the public, to their clients, and to the other aircraft in their airspace. So whether you're flying a 249 gram drone or a 25 kilogram one, you need to know the rules, understand the risks, and fly like a pro. We have a couple thoughts about this. This is like, thank goodness A, that this came out in time. Like realistically, we were kind of worried there's, there's changing government potentially going on right now. We've got an election right now which usually means that things get shut down, especially at the government level. So we're really excited about the level one complex and the fact that there's gonna be expanded privileges coming to advanced drone pilots. It's a huge leap forward, and that means that having your advanced pilot certificate is more important than ever, especially if you're planning on flying commercially. With more flexibility in where and how you can fly beyond visual line of sight, sheltered operations, enhanced visual line of sight, and even medium drones, advanced certification isn't just a nice to have anymore. It's gonna be the standard for professional drone operations in Canada. With the new level one complex beyond line of sight and the expanded privileges for advanced pilots and also the updated rules across the board, there's never been a better time to level up your drone skills. If you're thinking about getting certified, whether it's basic, advanced, or even FAA part 107, we've got you covered with training courses here at coastaldrone.co. Got links in the description below. And if you found this content helpful, of course, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and let us know in the comments, what change are you the most excited about? We wanna hear, we expect a ton of discussion about this. This is huge for Canadians and for Americans alike. And again, until next time, happy flying and stay safe out See there. See you next time.